Okay, in this practice problem, lesson 14 practice problems, we're going to take a look at nets and we're going to see if this will fold up to make a cube. Now, this is tricky because this is a two-dimensional shape on flat paper that we're trying to visualize and see if it will fold up to a cube. So what I have here are a couple things that we know are true about cubes. We know that cubes have six faces that are all the same. So we can see here that there are six squares, so this is good. So, so far we know we have the features of a cube, but will this net fold up and close in and create a cube? Well, I know that you know how much I love graph paper, and this is another reason why I highly recommend buying graph paper, because what I have done is I have replicated this shape using graph paper, and I cut out three by three squares. Because if you're like me, you need to physically fold it to see if it will work. It can be really hard to do this visually without having a manipulative. So again, I'm a big advocate for graph paper and a pair of scissors, <laughs> okay? So I just cut out this so that I can replicate it and fold it and see if it'll work. Now before I do, I am already worried because if I if I fold this up and I fold this around I can see that this will kind of close in but I'm worried about the other side like I don't feel like there's there's nothing that's going to close in the box but let's test it okay so if I were to fold this up here and I cut it a little bit too much so it's a little loose and then fold it here because again I'm doing three by threes all right so do you see how I was kind of right in my prediction here. I have part of a box and this is good. Okay, so, so far this is good. But the problem is just as I predicted, when I fold it five up to match four and six is gonna kind of form the box, the back end of the box. When I roll the rest of this up, it's not gonna close in the other side. I'm gonna actually have one too many squares here. So if I fold it up, see what's happening here? It, it does make a cube, but there's this extra space, this extra one that needs to be on the top. So I feel like if maybe this one was out here, like if instead of this one going here, if I moved it here, when I folded it up, there would be that square in the back that would close in my top. But this is not gonna work, okay? So I can tell that there's nothing on this side to close in my box when I fold it up. It's close, but not quite. So for my explana explanation, I may say that I used graph paper to work it out, but I feel like this one right here, this is the key. This one is not, it's gonna be too many. We have too many in a row here. This one almost needs to go like maybe here. Like if I were to like move it here, then when I folded it up, that should close in the back of my shape, okay? So it's very close, but not quite. But you can see how using some graph paper to help manipulate that worked, okay? Because right away I can see it's gonna be missing the top. There's one too many s squares along this side nothing to close in the top of the box. Okay, what about this? What polyhedron can be assembled from this net? Okay, well this is very close to my box. The only difference is that the left and the right are not rectangles, they're triangles. So I am guessing that if I folded this up, I would have a kind of like a tent or like a right triangle. So something that would look a little like this. I'm just gonna sketch it. See that? Kind of like the cheese wedge. Okay, that's what I think this will fold up to be. Now, again, if you have graph paper and you have a plain piece of graph paper, you can replicate this on graph paper and then fold it up to see. However, I know that if I know, if I remember what a triangular prism, the features of a triangular prism is that the ends or the faces here are gonna be triangular, but everything else is gonna be rectangular. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now it's saying, can you find the surface area of this triangular prism? 
all right, well, this is great because it's a net, so it makes it a lot easier. So I can see here's one of the faces, one, two, three, four, five, by one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to write in here five times five, which is 25, and I'm going to circle it. So I know that this is an area of 25. Now I can look at this one. This is an area of one, two, three, by one, two, three, four, five. So that would be three times five, which is 15. Then I have this one, because again, it's a prism and it's a triangular prism. So there's three sides to a triangle, so that means there's going to be three rectangles that connect the box. And this case, in this case, they're slightly different. All three of them are, are different, so triangular prisms can be a little tricky. This one is one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five. So this is four by five. So as you can see, each one of these rectangles has a different area. Okay, so now let's take a look at the triangles. Remember from earlier in the unit, a triangle is half of a rectangle. So we can do the base times height, but we have to divide by two. So I have a one, two, three, four. It's going to be four, the same as this, because they line up. So four is my base, and my height is three. So four times three, which is 12, but I have to divide by two because it's half. So this is six. And this is congruent to this. We know that because it's going to fold up and connect and close our box in. So I can just write 6 here because I figured out that that triangle is an area of 6. So this one has to have an area of 6. And now I'm going to take my time and add up all five of those sides, four rectangles and two triangles. So I have 6 plus 6 is 12. So I can do that mental math. So I'm going to put 12 and then I'm going to put two triangles. And then I have rectangle one, rectangle two, and rectangle three. And it doesn't matter which one is which. There's just three different triangles here. I just don't want to forget any. So I want to make sure I get them all, 20 plus 15 plus 25. 20 plus 15 plus 25. And I'm going to take my time and add up these numbers very carefully. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Regroup my 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 72 units squared, okay? Nets are actually pretty fun to do surface area with because you can visually see it. All right, let's take a look at, oh, let's take a look at this one. Um, it says here that Maya says both nets can be assembled into the same triangular prism. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I, they look like they might fold up to be the same. Again, very, very hard to tell. I, I like this one. I feel like this one is going to fold up to make a triangular prism pretty easily because if I fold these two up, they become the, the flaps and then this kind of rolls over. This is going to connect to that and then this will come around and connect to the other side. So I'm feeling really good about A. B looks like a hot mess though. So I'm trying to visualize if I fold this up and I fold this up, these two sides match. But I think this will work because if I fold it up, oh, I don't know. This one is a little tough. I don't know if I can figure this one out without graph paper, right? Because this one might be a little bit challenging to visualize. So I don't think it's going to work. Um, it might. Can we try it out? I, I'm all game if you guys are. Let's see if we can try it out. I'm going to use graph paper and sketch this. So I know that I actually can probably just trace it. Let's see if I can get a nice even space here. Uh, let's see that. Mm, see, and it doesn't quite match up. So I'm going to go ahead and just make my own measurements. So we have a triangle here, and I'm going to use four. And let's take it up. Let's see. One, two, three. We'll do three. Okay. So this is what we have. We have a triangle here, then we have a rectangle, and then we have another triangle. What is that? One, two, three. 
through here. Okay. Mm, sloppy drawing. Okay, and then I have this rectangle off the side, and I'm just going to sketch, and then I have this one off the side. All right, let's see if I can, let's see if I can try this. I'm doubtful that it will work, but you never know, so I always like to test it. All right. Did a pretty good job with the drawing, so hopefully it matches as much as I, as possible here. Um, looks like I cut this one off a little bit too much, but that's okay. All right, very weird shape. All right, so here we have the net. See how quickly I was able to do that? All right, so I'm gonna fold it on the creases so I can see what happens if I fold it up. And again, I sketched this, so it might not be perfect, but let's see what happens. All right, if I fold this up, ooh, guys, look at this. It does, it does make it, look at that. Oh my gosh, okay cool deal. So this did fold up to make a triangular prism, but do are they the same? I think they are going to be the same because if I look at this, if I put this there on top, um I think this will work, right? Because this is going to roll up over and make the sides. So here's the base and then this is going to come up top here and then the other one's going to come on the side. So yeah, they are the same. Wow, that was a really challenging question, but I do like how we tested it with craft paper. So yeah, these would actually fold up to be the same shape. Kudos to those of you who were able to visualize that without craft paper because I would struggle with that. So like I said, get some graph paper so that you can try it out because they are the same. So yes, this will work, okay? And then your explanation could be that you used graph paper to physically fold it up so you could check it out. All right, let's go ahead and stop with this lesson, this practice. These There's a couple more good questions here, but those three are actually really good and a really good way to practice nets.